I've been doing a number of projects recently uh, using various RF uh, frequencies um, involving 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, this is uh, my LoRa project and as always there will be links to these things in the description. And the LoRa module, um, this one works on 868 megahertz, we've got 2.4 gigahertz there. I was giving something to repair the other day. This runs at 433.9 megahertz, it says, with a little antenna there. But I was thinking about uh, how how to test these things, how to test these antennas. And you may even have some antennas in a drawer and you can't for the life of you remember uh, what frequency they were. So uh, here's a little project, something that I found on the on the internet uh, that I thought would be interesting to build. This is a little RF generator board based on the ADF4351 chip. And this can generate frequencies from 34.5 megahertz up to 4.4 gigahertz. And uh, to control that, we have uh, a little keypad shield that fits on our Arduino Uno. The only other components that we will need are three 1K resistors and three 560 ohm resistors to provide a little resistor network because the control lines for this development board are 3.3 volts and the UNO has 5 volts. So we'll see how that goes together and as you can see here on the internet uh, on this French website there's a description of how this goes together. Um, the units that I'm using are not exactly the same as this uh, so that's going to be part of the of the process to understand how that's going to how that's going to work. I've seen other people with this design on on YouTube but they've never seemed to go into enough detail for somebody to be able to build it perhaps uh, if they don't have sufficient experience so hopefully you can follow along and uh, we'll get this thing built. I've connected the resistor networks now and uh, done the wiring down through to the uh, little development board and the sketch I've downloaded and I've just tested that it compiles okay so let's upload the sketch to the UNO and uh, see where we go Well, that appears to be uh, successful. Um, not sure how well you can see this on the on the camera there. But, uh, let's just check with the buttons. As there was some comment about uh, which version of board, uh, the LCD shield board, and some things worked uh, differently, but this appears to be working okay. I wonder if it's actually generating anything. Let's get the oscilloscope out. On the oscilloscope we can see that there's something rather strange going on that needs investigating. The uh, output is uh, simply not stable. There seems to be some problem with the board that uh, we're going to have to get to the bottom of. I found the issue with the board uh, with the help of uh, a guy on the internet called Boris. Uh, he had a similar problem and posted a video on YouTube and I asked him uh, if he'd found a solution, which he had, and it uh, turns out to be remarkably simple. On the schematic for the board, it shows the chip enable pulled up through a 10K resistor. But in reality, on this version of the board, that component is missing, which means that the chip enable was floating, which was causing the strange effect. So with that now in place, uh, all is good. I've changed one of the connections here, the SMA connector. This one is now a male and the original ones are a female so that makes it easier to attach antennas. Uh, on the oscilloscope uh, we need to put a 50 ohm load so that the board has something to drive into and I robbed this out of my old um, stores. This was in fact a Terminator, 50 ohm Terminator for a 10 base 2 network if anybody remembers that. No, only me then. So with that in place, if we now power the board up, we have the 
waveform on the oscilloscope there at 35 megahertz and if we switch that up we can see that change on the oscilloscope now on the oscilloscope the bandwidth is, is, is limited so we're not going to be able to show higher frequencies uh, for example in the memories now I've added uh, 433 megahertz and also 2.4 gigahertz and 4.4 gigahertz but we're not going to be able to see those sorts of frequencies on the oscilloscope so we're going to need another device and in the next video I'll be showing you how to make a cheap and cheerful spectrum analyzer